Hello, welcome to my channel. Another Bibliophile Reads. My name is Greg, and I'm going to be trying to do something a little bit different today. Today is May 1st, and the first day of Horror Mayhem, where I am a co-host with the Bookish Bryants to encourage people to read horror. And the first week has a theme, supernatural monsters, and creatures, including cryptoids. Now, the book I have chosen to read is Killer Flies. And on the back cover, first they feasted on farm animals, then they found humans. A little girl was dead, attacked and mutilated by some things, creatures of nightmare that were spreading outward like the Black Death stripping entire towns bare of life. The death toll mounted with bodies maimed or ripped to shreds and thousands cowered in the shadows, hiding fearfully from the death out of the skies. The millions of sucking Prawaskai eagerly reaching out for the attack and terror erupted into uncontrollable panic as the lone scientist worked feverishly to save a dying planet and destroy the killer flies. And this book was published in 1983. So a highlight of the killer fly, the killer animal genre. And I have not read this yet, but um, I will be starting to read this tonight. And I'm going to try to do this week of horror mayhem entries in vlog style. So I will return with my first impressions of the killer flies. It's now 10.30. Um, I have read 68 pages of Killer Flies by Mark Kendall. Let me give you an example of the writing style. This is between Sherry. She's a, a, a widower, a widow with an eight-year-old daughter who's just been killed. And Hutch is her hired hand. And they have just, just discovered the body of Sherry's dead daughter. Hutch pulled her into his arms, pressing his lip to her silky hair Sherry, she's dead. The simple statement released the floodgate of her grief and horror. She clung to him, sobbing as the sun fell behind the jutting peaks and the night's shadows entered. Then it was over. She stepped back from him, her face revenged but controlled. You gonna be okay now? Let's call the sheriff. Her voice was flat and cold with hate. I want answers. I want them now. Nothing kills my child. I'll find them if it takes the rest of my life. A little overly dramatic for poor Sherry, who's lost her daughter. So um, how does the rest go? Well, this is a super, face, super fast paced book. Um, a pair of uh, horny teenagers can be in a souped up car and see the flies approaching. Um, and then in one paragraph, they're completely out of danger. Really fast. And um, everyone's really convinced about the danger of the flies, super fast. The dedicated scientist, is convinced that if you use pesticides, the flies will mutate into something worse. And of course, the governor of New Mexico doesn't believe him, so he's ordered the flies to be um, sprayed with pesticides. It's a killer animal book. That's all you get. I'll finish this tomorrow. So I'm on my back deck. I am going to be um, doing some reading of The Killer Flies this afternoon. Now, I don't think I, I gave the whole basic premise of the story, which is pretty simple and time-worn. Um, it starts off with a truck driver. 
he's got an emergency shipment to be delivered. Um, he is very concerned about um, why this shipment is so important. And um, of course, he's thinking about his sexy uh, Mexican girlfriend. And he hits a cow going at high speed and turns over the truck. And um, lo and behold, something escapes from the truck and devours the cow. And then he's trying to crawl out of the wreckage of the truck. The, the flies get the truck driver. And this is all in two pages. So um, as I said, very fast paced. And now I get to go on and um, finish the book, or at least get uh, a large way through it. The heat of the day and the sun proved too much for me. So I moved back into my basement to finish reading The Killer Flies. And what can I say about this? Um, the writing is plebeian. The characters are about as cardboard cutouts as you could ever imagine. The, the female lead, Sherry, turned out to be a horny MILF. And um, I guess that um, excited a, a lot of the teens and young, young men who read this book back in 1983. And in um, the end of the book, well, um, Let's just say um, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes had a very similar ending to this book. And um, it's okay. It's, it's a killer animal book. Uh, I guess I'm glad I finished it off. And now I'm going to move on to some more classic short stories of the horror, horror genre. So, what is a monster? What is a creature? Um, the movie The Beast from 20,000 Fathoms is basically, if I remember correctly from so many years ago, the story of a dinosaur awoken by a thermonuclear test that goes on a rampage. It was very loosely based on a short story called The Foghorn by Ray Bradbury. And um, I don't want to give away too much of this short story because... It's a really neat short story. It is only eight pages long in this edition, and it does contain a giant monster, the same way that the Beast from 20,000 Fathoms was about a giant monster. But um, this title is much more appropriately called The Foghorn. Um, and it's... Why, yes, yeah, it's about a giant monster. It's, it's more than just a giant monster. And as I remember the short story, not short story, the movie The Beast from 20,000 Fathoms, that was just a monster on a rampage. Um, and it was pretty good for what it was. But if you have a collection of Ray Bradbury short stories, check out The Foghorn, because it's a different view of what a monster is is or what a monster could be um so different from the killer flies that i just finished um and killer flies was just a ridiculous you know story of flies eating people but um the foghorn is well worth your time and effort to check out just to say this is a monster and the monster isn't a monster The New York City subway is a vast underground labyrinth built by humans, but we do not know everything in that system of tunnels nowadays. Some of those tunnels are basically no longer charted, which is sort of an interesting thing for me to think that we could build it, but then we sort of forget about it. There is a very good nonfiction work called The Mole People, by Jennifer Toth. And it is a nonfiction work about the homeless people who live in those tunnels. And that was published in 1995. In 1997, there was a horror novel, the sequel to The Relic, published, published by Douglas Preston and Lee Child. And um, that book was called The Reliquary. It's a direct sequel to The Relic. And there is a scene in the New York City subways where homeless people are eating track rabbit, which is directly lifted from the mole people. Now, maybe not directly lifted is um, 
probably a little bit too extreme, but uh, heavily influenced. And there is something very terrifying and scary about the New York City subway. So I have read two short stories featuring creatures in the New York City subways. And the first is Far Below by Robert Berber Johnson. And that is from my uh, collection of weird tales. It was originally published in 1939. And um, according to this little uh, brief synopsis, um, a woman named Dorothy McRath, Mil Ikrath calls it the best short story weird tales have ever, ever published. And it is um, sort of a, not really a sequel to some stories by H.P. Lovecraft. It is um, a story heavily influenced by, let's just say, Pickman's model. And um, it is a story of um, what happens in the New York City subways after the trains stop running, after the theater crowds die out and um, creatures start wandering the subway tunnels. And it is truly a magnificent little short story. Um, it's chilling in many ways and, and very atmospheric. And um, please try to track that down. Far Below by Robert Barbour Johnson. And now I have read another short story featuring New York City subways. And that is from Clive Barker's Books of Blood. And that is The Midnight Meat Train. And this is another short story featuring New York City subways and um, creatures that dwell in those subways. Now, uh, Johnson added another little, not Johnson, um, Barker added um, a little extra um, twist to the story of the creatures dwelling in the New York City subway. Now, this is a very, very famous short story. I'm sure almost half of the people have, have read this already, um, but I truly enjoyed the Midnight Meat Train. Um, very di different in atmosphere and storytelling than the Weird Tales uh, Far Below. Um, ultimately, I think the Far Below is a better overall short story, in my opinion. Um, but the Midnight Meat Train is just a great little short story. And those are my two creature short stories about the New York City subway. Hello. It's kind of late on a Thursday night, May 5th, and I, I wanna start wrapping up what I have been reading for the first week of Horror Mayhem, which is uh, supernatural beings, creatures, and cryptoids. But it really includes all sorts of monsters. Um, and I want to, to dwell on that. I want to ask the question, what do we talk about when we talk about monsters? I touched upon this briefly in my uh, comments on The Foghorn by Ray Bradbury, where I comment that the monster is not really a monster. And another question is, can a person be a monster or something else and not realize that. And um, how would you identify what that person really is? And I read a short story from this collection. It is Flies by Isaac Asimov. And um, this is a sort of a story of a reunion of an adult man who went to college together and they're scientists. And um, one of the scientists in his youth had a theory that um, if you could um, read the emotions of animals, you could determine their inner being. And, um, but that leads to other questions that he developed um, as an adult. And the question is, if someone is not what they say they are, how would a scientist know? And um, Isaac Asimov, is a really rather flaky science. Um, there's a question whether this is a science fiction story or a horror short story. It is one of those um, great pieces of fiction in between. And it's short, it's like 10 pages. Um, it's worth your while to check out.
But um, yes, there is sort of a creature involved in this short story. The next one I want to talk about is um, a human monster, a human creature. And that would be um, Edward Gain. Edward Gain is um, a killer. He is a grave robber. He is severely mentally, or he, he not is, he was severely mentally ill. And he was the model for Robert Bloch's uh, psycho, Norman Bates. He's also the model for Leatherface movie. And um, this is a fascinating graphic novel. Um, it tells the story of um, Ed Gain growing up and um, how he became who he was and how did he become a monster. And I am calling him a monster. Um, he was mentally ill, almost certainly, but his deeds were certainly monstrous. But how did he become that monster? Was that fated from birth or was it created? Well, I'm gonna say that that question is answered pretty early in the story about what caused Ed Gain to become who he was and eventually do the, the deeds that he did. And I, I found this a very fascinating little character study. Um, and I think the graphic novel really did this very well because it starts off when he was just a child and goes up through his death. So it's his entire life. And there's this, this brief little panel down at the bottom, right over there um, towards the end. And this is uh, um, after the police have discovered what Ed Gain has done and he's gaining lots of notoriety. And their comment is, um, there's the panels. I'll do, I, I probably can't see it that well. These two men walking. First panel is interesting to see it happen firsthand. See what happened firsthand? A boogeyman being created. This guy is gonna be right up there with Dracula and Jack the Ripper. So in this book, it describes how a mentally disturbed man who committed a very bad crime becomes an, a monster. And that's what I find really fascinating is not only does it take a gain to commit a crime, takes society to view him and turn him into a monster. So this is just a very good graphic novel. I, I think this is very close to being one of the best books that I've read this week. Um, definitely top of my list. Also top of my list would be the short story, The Foghorn by Ray Bradbury. Um, and the short story Far Below by Robert Johnson. Those would be my three top tier picks. Um, the Midnight Meat Train would be still very good, but a little bit less down than the others. Um, that would be followed by Flies by um, Isaac Asimov. And at the bottom of my list would be Killer Flies by Mark Kendall. That was the, the book that I had picked for, you know, this month as my, my creature's main read. And it turned out to be the least interesting book of them all. But now I have to get on to gothic horror and Shirley Jackson and her house with 12 people. And maybe there's an apocalypse, but that is for next week. And I hope everyone enjoyed this vlog. Thank you.